Hello and welcome back to Machine Learning. I'm Javita Christie. And in this video, we are going to learn the naive base classifier. So let's begin. The naive base classifier is a simple technique for building classifiers. And what are classifiers? Classifiers are models that assign class labels to problem instances. So you could be having problems um, like classify this tweet as a positive or a negative tweet or classify um, this object as a red object or blue object. So those are classification problems. The basic idea of Bayes' rule is that the outcome of a hypothesis can be predicted on the basis of some evidence E that can be observed. From the Bayes' rule, which we had, um, uh, which we've seen earlier in the previous videos, we have observed some certain things. One is that a prior probability of hypothesis H or PH. What is that? It is the probability of an event or hypothesis before the evidence was observed. And there's also a posterior probability of H, which is also called P of H given D, which is the probability of an event after the evidence is observed within the population D. So there's a prior prob probability and a posterior probability the prior probability deals with the probability before having any evidence available, but posterior probability talks about uh, probability after seeing some evidence uh, related to our data set. And this was the um, formula for um, this classification. Uh, this was the formula for Bayes' theorem, which talks about the posterior probability and the prior probability multiplied by conditional probability divided, divided by evidence. So you might remember this as P of A given B equal to P of, um, equal to P of um, B given A into P of A divided by P of B. So that's the same kind of uh, formula we are talking about here. Now, let's take a look at some uh, advantages and disadvantages of um, the Bayes classifier. So one of the strengths or advantages uh, is that simple, it is simple and fast in calculation and yet is, it is effective. So often you will notice that there are other, um, many other algorithms actually available uh, which can do the same task of classification. Uh, but naive Bayes would be the simplest one and yet it's very effective. And even if your data has noise in it or it has some missing data, uh, Naive Bayes is still going to perf uh, perform very well. And it also works well with, um, it works um, well with both smaller data set as well as a larger data set. So it doesn't matter what uh, kind of training data set you have. And it's a very easy and straightforward way to obtain the estimated probability of a prediction. Let's take a look at some of the weaknesses. So one such weakness is that the basis assumption of equal importance and independence often does not hold true. So naive base classifier always starts with uh, all hypotheses being equally uh, probable in the beginning. And that assumption does not always hold true once you're done applying the algorithm. Um, also, if you have the target data set and it contains you know, large numeric features, instead of categorical variables, um, then the reliability of the outcome becomes limited because imagine features like age, height, weight, they are not categorical variables. They are quantitative. So when you have lots of categorical, uh, when you have a lot of quantitative data in your uh, data set, then the naive base classifier is not going to perform too well. Then we have uh, the last weakness, which is that though the predicted classes have a high reliability, the estimated probabilities have a relatively lower reliability. So let's take a look at a solved uh, problem using the naive base classifier. So first of all, let us assume that we want to predict the outcome of a football World Cup match on the basis of the past performance uh, data of the playing teams. Okay, so we know a team and we want to find out if that team is going to win the football World Cup. So we have some training data available, and that training data contains weather conditions, uh, which were there like rainy, overcast, or sunny. Also contains how many match matches that team won. 
uh, out of the last three matches. Okay, so it can be one, two, and three. And humidity, uh, which is which can be either high or normal. And the last thing is that whether or not they won the toss. So there's always a coin toss done before the match. So whether or not that team um, won that toss. So it is depicted as true or false. Now, if you're using the naive base classifier, you need to classify the conditions and um, find out whether the team is going to win or lose the uh, entire match based on these, this given data. So you are told that it is rainy and it is uh, the humidity is normal and the team has won two of the last three matches and they also won the coin toss. What is the probability that they're going to win the match? Okay. So that's what we have to find out. And here is your data. So this is the original data. It contains about 14 rows. You can count them. Um, these are the weather conditions mentioned. You have rainy, overcast, sunny, uh, all those things. These are the wins in the last three matches, right? So you have one, two, and three. Uh, the humidity, high and normal. The win toss, that means the coin toss that was done, uh, whether they they got heads or not, so that is false and true, and whether they won the match or not, so that's yes or no. So these are the things available to you. The first thing we're going to do is create a frequency table. So what exactly is a frequency table? So a frequency table will show you the respective frequencies of the column that you want to predict with each other, uh, with um, every other column. So the column that I want to predict is the column that says whether the person, uh, whether the team won the match or not. Okay. And so I'm going to combine it with all the uh, four co other columns. So one of the first one is the weather condition. And there are three types of weather conditions, sunny, overcast, and rainy, as we saw previously. So we're just going to find out the yes or no answers to these questions. Okay. The first question is, when it was sunny, how many matches did they win? So let's take a look at that. So we know this is sunny, 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 okay. Uh, here and here. And let's see the corresponding um, yes or no. So this is when they are winning. Here they are winning. Here they are not. Okay. Um, once again, I believe this one is sunny. So they are winning here. And the last one, they are not winning. So you can see that there are three yeses and two no's. So if I fill that up here, um, I can write three over here and two over here. And in a similar way, you will find out for overcast, how many yeses are there and how many no's. For rainy, how many yeses and no's. Then take a total, which comes to nine yeses and five no's. Then let's take a look at um, last three matches how many matches they won so there are three wins one win two wins okay and once again we have to do the same thing so how many times does three wins come comes three times four times and at that time here we have one two no's right two no's and two yeses so that's what we are going to put here two no's and two yeses and similarly, we'll calculate for one win and two wins. Take a total, which will become, uh, which will be nine and five. The total will always remain the same because if you count the total number of yeses, they will always be nine. Total number of noes will always be five from a table. Okay. Then uh, we repeat the same thing for high humidity and normal humidity. Take a total, which is the same. Uh, and again, repeat that for wind toss. So false and true, take a total. Once again, the same. So this is what a frequency table looks like. Okay. Now we're going to move on and make all our predictions. So the first um, prediction that I want to make is for winning the match. So I want to calculate P of winning the match. Okay. So what can that be? So this is a big formula given here and it's fairly simple. The first one, which is P of A1 into win match divided by P of A1 is actually the probability. Now, um, in the question, uh, if you remember, we are given the values of A1, A2, A3, and A4. So let's just quickly uh, go back a bit and see those values. 
So here we are given the conditions that it is rainy. They have won two of the last three matches. The humidity is normal. Okay, and they did win the coin toss. So we have these four conditions for which we have to predict. Okay, so the value of A1 is going to be rainy. The value of A2 is going to be two, value of A3. A1 is associated with the weather condition. A2 is associated with um, how many matches they uh, they won before. And um, the A3 is associated with humidity. A4 is with the uh, coin toss thing, okay. Let's just quickly note that down before we proceed, okay. So I'm gonna note it down here that A1 um, is, is the condition that the weather is rainy. A2 shows that they did they were they have won two matches. A3 is showing that the humidity is normal. A4 shows that they won the coin toss. So now we have all the values. We are going to calculate using this formula here. So the first um, value we are putting is for P of A1 given win match divided by P of A1. So let's take a look at that. What is the P of A1? Uh, we're talking about it being rainy. So when it's rainy, uh, how many yeses do we have? Two. And how many total yeses do we have? Nine. So this will be two by nine. This will be two by nine. Multiply that by uh, A2, which is about winning two games. So for two games, uh, two wins, we have three yeses. So that, that would be three by nine. Then we have uh, for A3, which means normal humidity. So for normal humidity, we have six. Um, so this is going to be six by nine. Um, A4 is about coin toss. So the coin toss is true. And for that, we have three. So three by nine. Let's put that here, three by nine. And finally, the probability of winning the match. We know that there are total nine yeses and five noes. And so the winning match probability is nine by 14 because nine plus five is 14. Um, if you go ahead and evaluate all this, you are going to get 0 0.0141. Okay, you can make it more accurate if you like. So this is the calculation for uh, winning the match, probability for winning the match, okay. Let's now calculate probability for losing the match. So um, here I'm just going to write down P of not winning the match, okay, which is this. We can see the formula and you can also see the calculation given that um, this is three by five. We can go back and take a look. For rainy, it is three by five. For uh, two wins, we have one by five right here. For um, normal humidity, we have one by five here. Okay, and then for true, we have three no's. So that is three by five. Okay, so that's exactly what we are doing here. We are doing three by five into two by five into one by five into three by five into Five by fourteen because um, because we have um, into five by fourteen because we have how many uh, total wins we have? Okay, sorry. So because we have uh, fourteen different uh, wins, which is why we are talking about five by fourteen. Okay, so just a small correction in what it is given here. There is no three by five given here. But the answer is correct, 0 0.0102. So that's our correct answer. Okay. And now that we know these values, we know that the other one was 0 0.014 something. This one is 0 0.012. Now, usually probabilities when they are added should be one because this is about win and lose. So only two outcomes are possible. So if you add those, you should be getting a one, but you are not. So you have to perform normalization. Okay, this is how you can do normalization. So you will take win match and uh, probability of win match upon win match plus not winning the match. And just do that and you get this value 0.57. 
And similarly, for not winning the match, you can calculate it like this and you get the value uh, 0.421. Okay, so you can say this is about 58 percentage and this is about 42 percentage. So probability of winning the match is 58 percentage, probability of losing the match is 42 percentage. And that's how the naive base classifier works. It does not tell you that this is the answer. It does not just um, um, say, it just does not work with zeros and ones. It works with everything in between. So it's not going to tell you that this is the correct hypothesis and this is incorrect. It's going to tell you that this has a probability, which is this much for being correct. And this one has this much probability of being uh, correct. So that's how the naive base classifier works. So what can we conclude from this? Uh, like I said, 58% probability that the team will win. And so it provides you a very simple yet powerful way to consider the influence of multiple attributes on the target outcome and refine the uncertainty of the event on the basis of the prior knowledge because it is able to simplify the calculation through independence uh, assumption. Now, where is this kind of a classifier applied? So it can be applied in text classification. So you might want to, you know, classify text if you're given lots of uh, paragraphs of about 200 words each and you're told uh, classify them into uh, paragraphs about machine learning, paragraphs about um, databases, paragraphs about computer networks, you can do that. Um, you can also do topic uh, modeling, which means uh, if someone gives you a document, you could say that this document is talking about this topic. So that's text classification. You can also do spam filtering um, like your Gmail account uh, normally does for you so that all the junk mail goes into your spam folder. Uh, you can also do hybrid recommender systems. What are those? You can have um, when you open um, Amazon and go to your account, you will see that you are uh, sort of Having your own, um, uh, when you see your account, you can see that you are having uh, your own personalized uh, uh, view, which, which is not the same as someone else's view. So it is tailored just according to what you desire and what, you, what your interests are. That is a recommender system. Also works with uh, YouTube video recommendations and stuff like that. Um, there's also online sentiment analysis. So when you have some um, uh, tweets that you want to analyze and you don't want to particularly read all those tweets to understand what they are saying, but you just want to know if they are positive or negative about a certain topic, uh, you could do that by using a base classifier. So in a base classifier, you might also sometimes encounter continuous numeric features. Now we saw this earlier. Um, I told you earlier that if you have a lot of numeric features, then the reliability of this classifier uh, decreases because it, it is a classifier, it works better with classification data or categorical data. So what do you do if you have numeric features? Okay, what do you do if you have numeric features? Okay, um, you would then create in this case, you would create a workaround and you would discretize these continuous data by dividing them into ranges. Okay, so it is also called binning because you are putting individual categories into bins. Let's take an example. Uh, let us assume that we want to market a certain credit card to all the customers who are visiting a particular bank. Okay, so we have to classify the persons who are visiting the bank as either interested candidates for taking the new card or non-interested ones. And on the basis of that, the representative, uh, representative will approach the customers for sale. So how do we do that? Customers visit the bank uh, at any number of hours. Okay, and if we want to classify them, we have to plot the number of customers visiting the bank during the uh, hours when the bank is working. So let's say it's eight hours, then what will be the distribution graph of that? So it would be into bins and distribution graph will look like this. So you can say that between 10 and 11, uh, there are this many customers visiting, between 11 and 12, this many customers, 12 and one, this many, 
So you have essentially categorized your data, even though the data wasn't met. Okay. So this is the kind of thing you can do if you want to apply a base classifier um, on numeric features as well. Okay. So I hope you understood this. We are now going to proceed towards a program for the Bayesian classifier. So we're going to see um, a program uh, on, on with using Python, um, a program created using Python for implementing the Bayesian classifier or the naive base classifier. So here is the program for the naive base classifier and what it shows, first of all, we are going to import all the libraries that we require. And one library is the pandas library for dealing with uh, CSV file data. Second, uh, we will import the train test split function because we want to divide our data into training data set and test data set. We also want to calculate the accuracy of our model once it's uh, trained. So we are importing this accuracy score function as well. And the naive base um, classifier that we are going to apply is known as the Gaussian NB, the Gaussian naive base, so we are importing that. So these are the four things that are imported. Um, next, we will open our CSV file. So we are going to do data equal to pd dot read underscore CSV. I have uploaded the file here on GitHub so you can access that as well. So this is the file and I'm just printing the first five rows of the file by doing data.head. So this data that you see shows you the first five rows. So there are seven attributes, okay? It doesn't matter what these attributes mean, we just want to perform classification. So these, the values of these uh, seven attributes are going to predict a class for you. It's going to tell you, uh, where this data belongs to, to which class. Um, let me show you what the original data looks like. So there is a class one, there is class zero and so on. That's the kind of uh, data we have, okay? So classes can be one, zero, and that's it. So this is the original file. So based on these, uh, based on all these values, you will uh, know where, uh, where exactly, which class your data belongs to. Okay, um, now next what we are doing is segregating the predictor values. So we have to uh, sort of tell which of these are the values that we are going to use for prediction. So we are going to use all the columns from 81 to 87 for all, the, all these attributes we are going to use for prediction. And what we are going to actually predict is the class. So we are just dividing them by using the data.iloc function from pandas. Uh, so what we have done is we've mentioned the indices zero to seven, okay, which means uh, starting from the zeros column, you will be going from zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, not including seven, okay? So all these columns are now our predictors, okay? We take another variable target and put into it the class or the, the column that we are going to or predict. So we are going to predict class, which is our seventh column. So you just have to mention its index, which is seven. So the seventh column is our target. Okay. Now our next uh, task is to split our data set into training data and test data. So that's what we are doing now, splitting our data into training and test. So let me remove this and show it to you. Okay. So here you can see how the data is split into training and test uh, data. So what is done here, we are using the train test split function that we imported earlier, and it will return to us four things. It will return to us uh, the predictors training data, the predictors test data, the target training data, and the target test, test data. So predictors means all those seven columns. So it will return all the seven columns um, uh, as a test, uh, as a training data, as well as test. And target is our class column, which we want to predict. So it will return for that train and test as well. The whole idea behind train and test is to uh, split our data set into two parts. One is the training and one is the testing. So the one part we will be using for training the model, the second one we will be using for testing the model later. So, 
uh, what are we passing into it? The predictors and target variables that we created earlier. We are also going to pass how much data we want to put in the as a test data. Usually it's a 70-30 split or an 80-20 split. In this case, it's this 0.3, which means we are putting 30% of our data as test and 70% as training. Um, then we have a random state. So whatever state you mention here, uh, that is going to determine how much randomness will be associated with the data that is split. So it's not as simple as if there are 100 rows, this function is just going to pick the first 70, put them in training and the remaining 30 in test. It's going to do this randomly. And that state of randomness is specified here. Next, we will create an object of the Gaussian NB class and the object can be created in this manner. GNB is my name of the object and that's equal to Gaussian NB. Next, we will train the model. To train the model, you are going to use the dot fit function and pass into it uh, the training data. So we're going to pass the predictors training data and the target training data. Once our model is trained, we can perform predictions using this code right here. So we are going to do prediction um, using model.predict. And this time we are going to pass the predictors uh, test. Okay, because when we are training, we, we are passing the questions uh, as well as the answers. But when we are predicting, we will only pass the questions and not the answer. And we will see what the machine is generating as an answer. And then we will try to uh, um, sort of calculate the accuracy because we already have the answers to those questions. So that's what we are doing here, checking the accuracy. For that, we are using the accuracy score function that we imported earlier, where we will pass the target test, which is the actual data, and prediction, which we got from here, right? So we are passing the prediction as well. And uh, normalize uh, the, the parameter called normalize is true because we want a normalized score. Okay. So this is the score we are getting 0 0.90625. So this is the accuracy. You can say that in percentage, it would be about 90% accurate. And it's always good to measure accuracy because uh, later on we are going to do other classifiers. So you will be able to compare uh, the accuracy of those classifiers with this one. And oftentimes uh, you will notice that based on your data, you might have different kinds of uh, accuracies available. So you will be deciding which one to pick. So I hope you understood this and that's it for this video. I'll be back with the next one. So see you there and thank you for watching.